Hello viewers, I'm your host Dumela Joa and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Business Unchained. This of course is the show where we discuss the economy, finance, entrepreneurship, corporate journals and basically all things got to do with business. Today I've got a special guest but before we get there, let's check out what's trending around the world with the business news. Welcome back to the studio. Today I've got a special guest. I don't know if you guys have heard of any HR gurus, Mobotswana, then you would have guessed that I am sitting right here with Matlo Nolompwana. Matty? Hi, how are you? Welcome to Business and Jane. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, for those, of, um, those, are, those who are watching right now, um, would you like to tell us your journey to how you became the HR guru that you are right now? <laughs> HR guru. I'm not sure whether I'd say I'm an HR guru. I, I can tell you I'm an HR professional. Oh, but yeah, modesty. yeah, yeah. yeah. Humility, humility helps. <laughs> um, well, I, I was born and raised in Mobutuana. You know, I, I originally originated from Good Hope. You mm -hmm. know, Gatlaho. Uh, you know, that's where you know I'm from. Um, but I uh, grew up with Pigui. I, I, I'm, so I always tell people I, I, I'm a mining town. Mining town kid. Yeah, I'm a mining town kid. I'm a Zana, you know, because that's what we call people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, went to primary school there. I uh, went to junior community there, um, Then came, came, you know, then we came to the side of of, of, of the country. Uh, went to high school in GSS. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, class of 1992. You know, mm -hmm. representing as well because I, I just love the people that I went to school with as well. Um, yeah, and then I went to TS, Nagelogo TS, Ogoli Shibiti, and then Raboroni in the later part of that TS year, Tirelos Chab. You know. Did you yes. go to TS? I, uh, well, hey, I took a, a gap year at Tirelos Chab. Yes, I came later. Later. Hey, later, later yeah, later generations. Yeah, I don't know. We had Tirelos Chab, you know, from that very, very early age. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I'm, I've always been very, very big on the social development front. I've always been interested in human behavior. I've always been interested in what makes human beings tick. I've always been interested in how you can, you know, better the argument of who you are as people. So after Tiro Lusichaba, is that when you went to UB abroad? <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> when I studied abroad. Uh, yeah, I, I studied psychology mm -hmm. uh, at the behest of the government. So I've always felt this, you know, great avowal to my own country. And I've always believed for, you know, one has to come back and, and give back. Um, I study psychology um, and um, I've always, you know, um, been very, very invested in, in, in human behavior from the perspective of how do we progress things. Because I really think, you know, I'm very big on early childhood development, mm -hmm. education. Um, my first job when I got back, I was, I was actually an assistant lecturer at IHS, Institute of Health Sciences, Komale mm Polole. -hmm. Um, I was a lecturer there for nine months and then I left and I worked for Tebelo Bailey. Uh, in Khaboroni. Um, literally, I used to prick people's fingers and <laughs> counsel people. Yeah, oh. I, I, I was a, I was a, a, a counselor. I was a voluntary counseling and testing counselor. Wow. Uh, then um, after I think maybe a year or so, I was then promoted to actually run, you know, the Khaboroni Center, which was the biggest center at the time. At the time, Tebelopele was under the the, the, the CDC. Uh, under, under the auspices of the American government. So it was a joint venture between the, the Botswana, Botswana government and, and the, the USA. Yeah. That was during the, 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 the Mahaye era when uh, public health was, was top of mind um, and when Ramahaye was very, very um, passionate about ensuring uh, we don't all disappear as a result of this disease that could, scourge, that could yes. be uh, the scourge, that could be managed. Um, so that's when, you know, that, that's where you find my origins in terms of like human development, being invested in human life. 
um, and just education. And uh, interesting enough, I'm one of those people I've worked in a lot of organizations because um, the longest job I've ever had is, is, has been three years. I come in, um, I'm very transformational in approach. You know, I come in, I look at what needs to be done, I do it, and then I move on. So and you're I, like a fixer. Yes, I'm, I'm like the fixer. Yeah, I swear, I, I swear, you know, I, and it sounds, that sounds rather non-humble, but mm. I, I really am the kind of person who wants to leave a legacy. At the end of the day, I mean, you can, you can either like me or not like me, but you cannot say that I'm not effective. You I know? love your drive. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, your drive. Yeah. So yeah, human resource. Um, what's re human resources to you? What does it mean to you, especially yeah. when we look at how it's applied within our borders? Yeah, I, I think it's really just about understanding that people are capital, you know, mm -hmm. um, understanding that that's human capital, understanding that there's value uh, in people and, and any organization can, can have a mandate, but the mandate will not be realized outside of people. You're always going to need people, uh, whether, you know, even with the, the, the current uh, buzz, you know, everybody's talking about uh, the fourth industrial revolution, like, yeah. you know, people are talking about machines replacing human beings. No, jobs are just going to evolve to be different, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I mean, you, instead of, you, you're going to find that a lot of what machines cannot do, human beings will be doing. Whether you are now, um, you know, where the technology is, you'll now be maintaining and managing, you know, mm -hmm. and operating the machinery. Uh, but there's a lot of data analysis as well that, uh, for all intents and purposes, you know, machines will not be able, like emotion, for instance, where you're supposed to interpret emotion. Uh, technology, you know, it has not yet evolved to the point where it can, you know, uh, in interpret uh, emotion. And so that could be for now. I mean, like yeah, that could be for yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That, and, and 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 you're very much right. But the the, the point is, you know, the kind of person who's going to survive in the world going forward is a very agile type of person. The kind of person who understands that you have to you, you have to foresee the future before the future arrives. So basically, with AI. And automation yeah we as human beings would have to evolve yeah we have, you, well. you, you have to evolve and I mean if, if you look at even like companies that have not evolved uh, with time they, mm -hmm. they, they become defunct I mean look at your Nokia you know what I mean oh, yes. uh, look at um, you know your Kodak uh, look at like everything right now that you can do on your phone you know mm -hmm. Kodak use and, and, and Kodak needed to to keep up with those times but you asked me about what what, what human resources is for me like as, as, as a profession I just think it's really about you know my, 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 my function as an HR practitioner is to offer solutions um, to the business via how we can utilize the human capital in the organization in a manner where we can suppress all the expectations uh, that are before us. I think the most effective uh, HR practitioner is, is one who shows compassion, but one who's also very pragmatic. Because you're literally, when you work in an organization uh, as an HR practitioner, you're literally you know, serving the needs of the employee, whilst at the same time ensuring that the objectives of the employer are mm -hmm. met. You know? yeah. um, and um, if you're a really good HR practitioner, it's just not even met, but those objectives are, are, are suppressed to a point where the organization personifies a level of, of, of excellence. And um, I just think though that a huge part of it has to do with the fact that you have to have a value proposition as an employer. Uh, and if the HR, if the employee experience uh, is not a beautiful experience, you know, it will not be mirrored in terms of like the, 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 the customer service. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hope at home you're getting an insight into your value as human capital. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Business Unchained. What does it take to be a good HR professional? I think you have to love people. You know, 
I think you have to love people. You have to be invested in people. Mm -hmm. You have to um, really be passionate about offering solutions. I say to people all the time, it's really not about coming up with the impossible. It's, it's, it's seeing the art of the possible. So if you're a really, really good HR practitioner, I think you need to be able to also see the best in people and uh, be able to uh, look at people's development areas and um, be in a position to offer solutions as to how can we uh, somehow water those development areas down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your major highlights, both in the corporate world and in business? Mm. Let me say, your, your, give us a perspective mm. of how you see the corporate world as balanced with business. Um, you, you know, I think, I th I think the, the, there's one of two things. As a professional, you can either choose to work for an institution, which is, you know, that sense of the corporate world as, you know, most people define it. And uh, business is, for me, where you venture out and you set up, you know, your own thing and you're your own boss. Uh, and I, I, I just think, in my, in my opinion, that uh, when you now go into business, you're truly liberated uh, because you hold yourself accountable. I mean, I think there's, there, there's something to be said for somebody who does not have a constant paycheck that just comes automatically. In the corporate world, I've seen a lot of people really coast along, um, especially if the organization tolerates that type of behavior. Mm. Uh, you see that a lot um, in, 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 certain, in certain industries. You see that a lot in certain organizations. And obviously, those organizations are very mediocre in terms of what it is that they give, you know, that, 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 that customers. Uh, when you work for yourself, you know, when you're, you're, you're in the business realm, you, you come up with solutions, you know, and you, you look at problems and you offer solutions to those problems and you monetize that. Um, but I think, you know, one of my highlights has always been um, to see the evolution of my own career from uh, where I started off at a very, very junior level and uh, to make it up the corporate ladder. But it's not just about making up the corporate ladder, it's just the networks that I've been able to cement because I, I, I just really think it's a fallacy to believe that everything that you get in life you get simply because you are that good yeah. you know i think being good is an aspect of what will aid your journey but people make other people, other people. Uh, there are a lot of i've met a lot of really amazing people uh, a lot of people that have given me a lot of insight a lot of people that have nourished my life a lot of time when people talk about others uh, they like to look at you know the evil within man the instead negative. of looking at the negative instead of looking at the good i i think for me one of the key highlights is, is, is my networks I, I you know I, I i have a very stealthy network and not just within the parameters of this country i mean everywhere internationally um there are very few people that i can think of right now that anyone would want to meet that i have not encountered in some way uh, if not on a personal one-on-one -on -one level but i've sat and you know you know been and been part of an audience and listened to like the greatest minds in the world uh, i think for me uh, because i'm very content driven I take in content, I learn a lot, I like reading, I like listening to really, you know, um, wise people. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's just been an amazing experience to have been given that much. And then, you know, because of that and because of what I've been given, another highlight on the flip side, and I was saying this within the context of your question, but within yes. corporate, that's, that's what corporate has exposed me to because a lot of the places that I've been to, I have not had to pay to go there. It's been because of you know, different em em employers like giving me opportunities, like exposure. Uh, and as a result, you know, I've, I've I, another highlight now in my personal space, like when you talk about business, I, I consider myself to be um, a social entrepreneur. You know, I, I, I love sharing and I love uh, the whole realm of coaching and mentoring. So I've given that which I've been given back to younger people or people that, that you don't need to be young, you know, people that want to learn, you know, people that yeah. understand that we're all essentially learning beings and that, you know, we're all going to die still learning, you know, there, there's never, I, I'm, I'm often saddened by people that um, have the notion now that they've arrived, you know, so a lot of people that understand that it's a journey, <laughs> those are the kind of people that I've had the opportunity to interact with um, <clears throat> through my coaching and mentoring program, um, which is in the, in the name of my, my late sister, Tiamo Kotlema Kapi Coaching and Mentoring mm -hmm. uh, Trust and you know, a lot of that work that we do in that space and that I do in that space also is, is, is really fueled by the fact that I, li I love speaking. I speak, I'm a transformational speaker and, you know, it's a passion that I have. I, I, I like sharing ideas. 
um, and I've successfully been able to monetize that part of you know my passion uh, and ultimately you know um, one of the things that I've, I've derived out of that is that I've, I'm, I'm just about to, to publish a book wow. um, and it's taken me years to write it because I think uh, a lot of us Botswana we, we, we like publishing and we think if you're a publisher you're a writer I know right, you can, yeah. yeah you can I mean you can publish anything you can publish rubbish uh, but who will read it you know and hopefully you know, with God's grace, when people pick it up, they, 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 will, they will enjoy the experience. And I would love, I would have to actually love to get to that. I hope at home you guys are learning something. Uh, we're going to take a, a young break. Uh, I'm going to expand my network behind the scenes with Matty. See you <laughs> after this. Welcome back to our insightful conversation with Makarono Mponang. We're right here on Business Unchained and we were discussing HR and her journey to where she is now. Mrs. Mponang, mm -hmm. tell us about that book and please tell us about that CSR lifestyle. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so, the, so the book is about the Moroto you know, like when it rains, mm -hmm. Oh, oh yes, the yeah. drizzle. Yeah, it, not even it, it can like rain, like proper rain, but mm -hmm. the sunshine is out. So the urine of the sun. I, 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 just growing up as a kid, it used to fascinate me, and then it stops or just <laughs> as suddenly. But anyway, the book is basically just a book about you know my perspective on different things as mirrored you know through my own life. But it's not it's not an autobiography, but it's it's, it's somewhat it's perspective. Sa a, perspective. Some some bi biographical. But um, yeah, like um, the coach and mentoring that, that, that we do is, is basically something saying, you know, the, the intention is to, you know, at some point later on, build and um, digital libraries across the country. Mm -hmm. Hybrids, words, there's a hard copy of a book and then you also find the digital version. I think there's, there's value in learning how to, you know, how to read and really reading, developing reading as a culture. Yes. Because I think if you, if, you, if you can't read, you can't write and you can't speak. Mm -hmm. you know? And those are three key elements within, w w that can actually guide and drive and galvanize uh, an economy because that's education. But um, because, and, and hence, you know, the whole thing of communication and our, our whole thing is we want to do that from a very, very early age. So, um, you know, we have very grand ideas um, and right now, you know, we, 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 we treat ourselves as an entity, as, uh, as TGM, coaching and mentoring. Um, trust, TGM, it's, 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 it's a social development um, engine. We, we, we really treat ourselves seriously. Get out, even if you look at our content, even if you get on Facebook, uh, we try and you know give people something that is rather professional in terms of our output. Mm -hmm. uh, and even our program itself, the way that it's ran, we, we run it in a manner where it personifies our own values. Uh, not only Rile Batswana, but as human beings, you know, because I, I just think, you know, a part of our problem with Rile Batswana is that we see ourselves within the parameters of this country. People say we're landlocked. We're not landlocked. Mm -hmm. We're land-linked. You know, we're linked to other countries. Makes sense. Yeah. Once you say you're locked, you you, you start to to live that life and get then you you're, you're in a you're That's in a true. prison. Now, who's your mentor? Um, uh, my current mentor, actually, I've got several. Hey, my current mentor is uh, like, do you switch every like ten years? Or no, do you I just achieve something. I just ban 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 la baoket se ha. I've been so, so blessed. Basically, Bow gets there and one big bag. It's not like it's one no, move to the no, next no. one. I, I maintain relationships. I don't burn bridges. I build ah. them. Yeah, I build bridges. My current mentor, I get a Morocco. 
you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Neil Moroka, I, I have a great deal of respect for him. Uh, he's uh, achieved a lot, you know, in his life, you know, in all spheres. He's just a complete human being and he's just amazingly humble. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very much attracted to humble people, though some people say I don't seem humble, just by the way that I walk and the way that I talk. Uh, but, uh, you know, those that know me well will know that my life personifies humility. Um, Seti, Liburu, she's, um, she's been, she was my, my CEO when I was at Kuzwana um, yeah. Accountancy College. You know, I used to deputize her. Deboko Matome used to be my CEO when I was at Leah. Uh, Joshua Haleforolwe, I mean, he's like my uncle. You know, I call him Uncle Josh. One of the greatest minds that Botswana has had, mm -hmm. you know. And, and one of those people, Bailong, what I feel had we listened to him more, um, this country would be further because a lot of what he, he did talk about has come to pass. I love, I, I love, I love your journey. Yeah. I mean, you have Murutuala Tati, but for some strange reason, I feel like Murutuala Tati is like a taste of what you'd actually have to offer with your next book, which yes. will probably be the autobiography. Yes. Because yes. that's where I feel all yes. the juicy bits yes. would be, you know yes. what I mean? Yes, yes. And I'm going to retire into writing, like, because I, I think really what I was born to do is write more so than anything else, because I, I, I'm not a bad writer, you know, I'm not too shoddy. You're not too shabby. No, 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 no. <laughs> all right. no, 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 no. Now let's get back to entrepreneurship. Mm. Um, what's your take on it and where do you think we're going from, let's say, 2020 onward as a country? I think Botswana has to, you know, and, and, and I, like, I like the fact that Ramasisi in his current choice of, of cabinet ministers or SAMPs and, you know, his current choice of his executive, he's been very bold to go out and get people that are professionals as well. Um, eh, no, no I, I, I'm really impressed with, with, with the people that have been picked. I think that they're, they're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's time to take bold action. I think in order for entrepreneurship to get to the next level in this country, you have to find some serious people who are in key decision-making uh, positions in this country because I think that's what kills entrepreneurship in this country. I think there are a lot of young people that are talented, a lot of young people that have potential. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as long as they're that they're not in an environment that allows them to, to actually grow. Like, somebody's done work for you and you sit on a payment for like six months, what's that? Oh. Uh, you're saying, you, 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 you know, you, you publish tenders saying you want people to offer a particular service and it takes you another six months to evaluate the tenders. I, that, that's what kills business. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we're too slow, you know. Um, you know, in places like Rwanda, they give you a, a, a time period. They say this will be done in 48 hours. And if it's not done in 48 hours, they say consider it done. Could consider it done. It's that, a, yeah, if you it. want a permit and in 48 hours you don't have the permit or you haven't heard anything, consider the permit to be yours. You know, I think that this, this country needs that level of audacity. Mm -hmm. I'm in no doubt that um, in the future, going forward, if the necessary changes are made, because I think there are a lot of people that have a lot of power in this country that have no business sitting in their chairs uh, because they're just not committed. Yes. You know, that's just the I truth. Mean, our government has been um, selling a lot of uh, youth entrepreneurship uh, initiatives. Yeah, but you, the, the environment needs to be enabling yes. of that. And for the environment to be enabling of the success of those different programs, mm -hmm. you need people that are very, very passionate and that are very invested in service delivery. But it's as simple as that. There's no science to it. Just People just need to do that work. But do you think the youth is actually woke enough this time around to actually vote and actually participate in looking at the country, not just for from a two-year perspective, but from a, a more long-term. You know, I, 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 I do, but I think as well, the other, the other flip side of it is that there are a lot of people, you know, because the government really does not owe you anything other than to give you an enabling environment for you to do what you're doing. Uh, is that simple? Yeah, we were very entitled. And, and, and it's the, I always say it's the unintended consequences of kindness because our government has taken care of us, has been so paternalistic, so we think we are owed these things that in other environments people have to fight for. Yeah. But I do think younger people are beginning to realize that it's, it's tough because a lot of people are, are really going through the most. But you can't also sit at home and say, I have a degree and I'm just going to sit at home. And but yeah. they, they, they made a plan. You yeah. need to make and a plan. They're actually doing well. Yeah, they're actually doing very, very well. I, I just think, over too long, you know, you, you have to stand up and be counted. Eh? It's very important. So that's my take on entrepreneurship. I, I, I think on we can be much more, you know, self motivated and self inspired. 
but the environment needs to allow us to, to use something and flourish, yeah, and flourish yeah, with, 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 with our God-given talents. Yeah. All right, great. Well, our time is almost up. Uh, if you want any more information, you've got, uh, you just check it out on our screens, social, right there. Any last words before we leave? No, thank you for having me. Hey? It's, it's, it's nice and it's inspiring to see that young people are, are now having these type of platforms. And, and I hope you invite all kinds of people to this platform. Oh, definitely. Yes. We are chain yeah. business here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, from myself, Timelo Jawa, Memampona, and from the crew, Salansinth.